Thank you to Ren for sponsoring today's video. Hello maths fans! Something a little different for you today as I'm going to be calculating my carbon footprint using Ren. Ren is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint then offset it through a monthly subscription that funds carbon reduction projects. But more on that later. First up, let's see just how bad my footprint is. All right, which country do I live in? United Kingdom. Okay, nice straightforward, I like that. Nice easy question to get me started. Okay, I'm calculating my footprint, just me. Okay, how many cars do I, I wish I had a car. Uh, no, I do not have a car, so I use zero cars. Okay. How many short flights do you take each year? Any flight less than three hours? Ooh, I'm gonna go with pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, maybe one a month. So let's say 12, ooh, that sounds high. Um, that sounds very high. How many long flights do you take each year? Ooh, I normally go to the US maybe once, possibly twice. Maybe a trip to Asia, usually China. Maybe two, I think two on average. I'm gonna do a two, two round trips, long haul. Yes. Okay, I'm going with that, I think two. Uh, diet, um, I'm not vegetarian, I'm not vegan, so I'm neither. Okay, how often do I eat red meat? Lamb and beef both count. Probably a couple of times a week. Not, not that much, but yeah, maybe a couple times a week. How often do I have chicken, pork, seafood, or eggs? Probably once a day. Once a day? Yeah, let's go once a day. How often do I have milk, cheese, or other dairy? Oh, I love cheese. <laughs> Definitely have cheese every day. Okay, once a day. Um, right, how big is your living space? I'm in an apartment, so that would be a small apartment. Uh, do I have any pets? I really want a pet parrot, but I do not, unfortunately, have a pet parrot or any pet. So no pets for me. How much do you spend on clothes? Ugh, oh, little or average? I'm gonna say, oh, I don't spend 50 pounds a month. That's steep. I'm gonna go with little. Uh, renewable energy do you purchase or produce? Um, well, I, that's organized through the uni. Uh, so I don't know, but non-personally, so I guess zero. Natural gas do I use? Probably average. I mean, I cook every now and then, not that much. Heating though, I suppose, heating and hot showers. Okay, fine, average. Okay, quiz complete. Right, let's see the big results. I'm actually a little bit nervous. <laughs> okay, right, my carbon footprint is 13.5 tonnes of CO2. 2.8 times the world average. Sorry world, that isn't great. I'm apparently about twice the UK average, yikes. Uh, that is not good. I'm blaming all those flights, to be honest. Well, we'll see what it is. We do our calculations shortly. I'm guessing it's the flights and the travel. Um, but less than the US. Silver lining, there's at least that. I am less than the US, considerably less than the US average, which is almost three times the UK average, wow. I mean, not surprising, but wow. Oh, here we go. So we've got a breakdown on the UK average for each category. I see, so I'm, I'm very low on goods and services, thought I would be. About average on home, fine. Diet, I seem to be a little bit less than most people, probably because I don't eat that much red meat. Basically, I just eat a lot of chicken. <laughs> Energy also seems to be below average, probably because I'm just in a flat by myself. Uh, but transport, yeah, I thought it might be. Transport is very high. Okay, note to self, fly less. I mean, COVID is doing that for me, so again, Silver lining. Overall, um, I'd say, yeah, I'm definitely above the UK average. Uh, not looking great. Work to be done. So now I know the number, and very helpfully how many trees, hamburgers, square feet of sea ice, and even cow burps this equates to. But what I really want to know is how is this calculated? And for that, we need to do some maths. Let's start by looking at how much each element contributes to the total. First up, cars. Supposing you own a petrol car that has an average amount of efficiency and you use this the average amount 
for somebody in the UK, then this would equate for a petrol car to 4.6 tons of CO2 per year. Now, rather alarmingly, this is only just a little bit below the world average of 4.9 tons of CO2 per year. Now we can reduce this by using an electric car and the reduction is quite significant. So for an electric car for the same amount of usage, this would actually only correspond to 0.4 tons of CO2 per year. That's a reduction of 91%. Now at the moment, I don't actually own my own car. However, were I decide to buy one, this reduction and this saving in CO2 emissions would definitely persuade me that the electric car was the way to go. Next, we have flights. Now I found this one quite interesting because for short haul trips, and these are round trips, so this would of course account for eight individual flights. So for short haul round trips, I did 1.9 tons of CO2 to the total. Now if you increase this to 12 short haul round trips, then this actually added 5.5 tons to our total. Now, if you take these numbers and work out the amount per flight, then what we get here is 0.475 per flight. But if we take 12, this actually reduces to about 0.475 for six per flight. So this would seem to suggest, based on these calculations at least, that the more flights you take, there is a slight reduction in your carbon contribution per flight. Of course, your overall footprint will go up as you take more flights, that is without question. But based on this calculation, there seems to be some very slight reduction for those people who take many flights. For long haul flights, the calculation is a lot more straightforward. For each long haul round trip, you are adding a total of 2.35 tons of CO2 per that return flight. This is basically the same as the average annual carbon footprint from a single Indian citizen. Now we've covered transport, what about diet? Now, for a vegetarian, you will actually reduce your carbon footprint compared to the same person who is non-vegetarian by 1.4 minus 1.4 tons of CO2. And if you go a step further and are vegan, then this reduction increases, again, compared to your similar meat eating corresponding person, the reduction here is minus 1.6 tons of CO2. Now, even if you want to continue to eat meat, as most of us do, myself included, you can reduce your footprint dramatically by avoiding red meat. So if you completely cut red meat from your diet, this will save, so no red meat, this will save around 0.9 tons of CO2 per year. The next category is pets. And I have a feeling this is really gonna test my artistic talents. So let's try and draw some kind of four-legged character here. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, I think it's a cat. Right, we've got a cat with whiskers. That's not too bad. 
Now, for every cat that you have in your household, that will contribute 0.3 tons of CO2. And this is per cat. For a dog, this goes up to 0 0.8 tons of CO2. And that's for an average sized dog. Now, if you have what's classed as a large dog, which is one over 20 kilograms, that will actually cost you 2.5 tons of CO2. And for all pets, of course, there are many others. The main contribution here in terms of the carbon footprint is actually from food production. Next, let's look at clothing. Now, I found this to be quite an interesting category because the average amount that is spent on clothes was defined to be 52 pounds and 41 pence per month. So average amount is 52 pounds and 41 pence. Now, if you were to reduce the amount of clothes that you buy, for example, by wearing old clothes or purchasing secondhand clothes from charity shops, etc. If you were to reduce this to be what is called a small amount, which is defined to be 17 pounds and 72 pence, then this will actually reduce your carbon footprint by 0 0.3 tons per year. Now, if you're a really big spender <laughs> and let's call this large and you're spending around £157.98 per month on clothes, then reducing this down to the small amount of £17.72 would actually save you 1.1 tonnes of CO2. I can honestly say I found this one quite difficult to answer because I've never really thought too much about how often I purchase clothes. The final category I want to look at is energy consumption at home. Now I've kind of run out of space on the board, but I will attempt to draw something vaguely resembling a house. Maybe it's got a couple of little windows over there. Now, Based on using an average amount of gas and electricity in your home, and this is data from the UK, then if you were to switch to 100% renewable energy, this would actually save you 0.5 tonnes of CO2. And this will of course scale linearly, so for example, if you went to 50% renewables, then this would save you half as much, and so you would save 0 0.25 tons of CO2 if you were to change to half of your energy coming from renewable resources. I've looked at six categories in detail on the board, but there are of course several others in the REN carbon calculator. These include furnishings, supplies such as cleaning materials, public transport, services such as your phone contract, and many more. I do recommend heading over to REN yourself to check it out in full. And if you decide to sign up to offset your footprint with a monthly subscription, the first 100 people to do so using the link in the video description will each have 10 trees planted in their name. And tree planting isn't the only project funded by your donations. REN also support mineral weathering in Scotland, wildfire prevention in California, and protection of the Amazon rainforest in Peru. Have a look for yourself and let me know in the comments how your carbon footprint compares to mine. We all need to do something to try to fix the climate crisis, and REN seems to me like a good place to start. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all soon. Take care.